Look at this cheesy, beefy, noodly cheeseburger mac. And it only took about 15 minutes to make. I'm gonna show you exactly how. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna to make a super easy cheeseburger macaroni. So this is sort of after the hamburger helper type. There's a couple different varieties you can get, but cheeseburger mac is one of them. And I've never had it before, but I told Jeff, I wanna create a recipe that is like that, but tastes exactly like a cheeseburger. And guess what? I got it. It works perfectly. It's super easy. You can see I don't even have a Ninja Foodi here. You really don't need one for this recipe. We're not going to pressure cook. Now, you could adapt it for a pressure cooker and that would be fine. It would work fine. But I found that just using a skillet um, and the stove works perfectly and it is super quick and easy. What I'm using here is a nonstick three quart skillet. You're going to want a skillet that has a lid on it that will fit on top, okay? And you could use uh, like a Dutch oven if you wanted. You could use, you know, any kind of a pot. So if you don't have a three quart skillet that's, you know, large like this, you could make it in a pot, no problems at all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my induction burner turned on and the pan starting to heat. So I'm using a nonstick pan, but like I said, you can use a pot, you could use a stainless steel pan, you can use a cast iron pan, whatever you have, just make sure it can hold all the ingredients. Now, the, the um, depth won't make a difference, so if you wanted to make it in a pot, you certainly can. It just might take a little bit longer because we're gonna spread out all the ingredients and they're gonna cook pretty quickly because they're spread out like that and not deep. All right, so we have one pound of ground beef and I'm just gonna add that in. This is 80-20, but you could use lean if you wanted to, no problems whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, saute the beef and I'm just gonna break it up into chunks here. And you want to get it to about 75% done. So I'm going to go for a few minutes. And then I'm going to add in the onions and some seasonings. All right, so while that starts to brown, let me go over the seasoning blend I'm going to use. For the dry spices, I have one teaspoon of fine grind sea salt, a half of a teaspoon of black pepper, half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half of a teaspoon of onion powder. And that's it for the dry spices. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those in. Get the meat coated with the spices because that'll give tons of flavor and flavor is what we want for sure. All right, so we're about 50% done with the ground beef. I'm gonna add in one Vidalia onion. Now you could use whatever onion you have on hand or you could omit it, no worries there. But I use a Vidalia and it's diced in about a quarter inch dice. All right, so let's let this finish up and we're gonna add in some other ingredients. So I'm going to add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. That brings a depth of flavor, so don't skip that. It's pretty important in the recipe. Just gives this nice flavor to the dish. Then I'm going to add in one can of fire roasted tomatoes with the juice so they're not drained. I'm going to add those right in. Those are totally optional. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. All right, looks good. Now, I get the question all the time. Do you drain your ground beef? I don't, I'm using 80-20. I leave the fat in there for flavor, but you can absolutely drain it off. It's not gonna cause any problems in this recipe. Just don't add in the Worcestershire sauce or the tomatoes till after you cook the meat and then drain the grease off and then keep on going with the recipe. No problems whatsoever. All right, so let's get the, some of the other ingredients in. I'm gonna use one tablespoon of Demerara sugar. So this is a coarser sugar. Um, it's tan in color. It's a little less processed than white sugar. I love the flavor that it gives. But you could use a little bit of brown sugar. You could use a sugar substitute. You could skip the sugar. What the sugar does is kind of balance the acid it out. So it, to me, it was important ingredient, but you can certainly omit it if you like. All right. So now we've got to get in our macaroni. So we're going to add in eight ounces of dry macaroni. And 
and stir this around a little bit. Now we've got to get in some beef stock. So one thing I'm going to say about the beef stock is it gives a tremendous flavor, absolutely wonderful flavor when you use the beef stock, but it does turn the noodles a little bit darker. Okay. So if you don't want that to be the case, use chicken stock, or you could even use water, but really I would go with chicken stock or beef stock in this recipe. All right. I've got four cups here, but I'm not going to add it all in. I'm going to add in about three cups to start. Turn up my heat because we can bring this up to a boil now. And I'm just gonna make sure that the noodles are underneath of the liquid. And now we're gonna bring it up to a boil and we're gonna simmer until the macaroni is cooked, which really just takes probably about 10 or 15 minutes. So you can put the lid on. Uh, so I go back and forth. Sometimes I leave it on, sometimes I leave it off. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it in, put it on right now. And we're just gonna let this come to a boil and simmer until the macaroni is cooked. We add a few more ingredients and dinner's done. All right, so it's been about six minutes and I went ahead and took the lid off about five minutes uh, into the cooking process. So I let it simmer with the lid on and then took the lid off just to get some of the evaporation out. So what we're waiting for is for the noodles to cook completely to your liking. So that can vary. It will also vary based on the pasta shape that you're gonna use. That's why I really encourage just to use three cups of the beef broth. You could even start with two if you wanted and see how much your noodles are absorbing. Then you can add more, okay? Because we don't want this to be real soupy at the end. Although it would be a great cheeseburger soup. Oh my gosh, it would be amazing with extra broth and I, I would love that. But we're gonna make it as the cheeseburger hamburger helper. So we want a thicker sauce. Um, so as soon as this is all done cooking, then we will add in a few other ingredients that give it the true cheeseburger taste, including some shredded cheese and we'll be ready to serve up our dinner. All right, it's looking good. The liquid is reducing, the noodles are cooking, and I just gave it a nice stir. You do wanna stir this occasionally. You don't have to babysit it, but occasionally stir it. And let's talk about the noodles. I'm using elbow macaroni because that is traditional with a cheeseburger macaroni. Um, but you could use any shape you wanted. So you could use penne, rigatoni. Um, I used a uh, salante. You could use farfowl if you wanted, a little bow ties. So you can make this however you want. No worries and no changes to anything. Just get the pasta cooked how you like it and it's going to be perfect. All right, it's really, really looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and taste a noodle. It's been probably about 12 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna go and give them a taste, see if they're done yet. I think it's gonna need another few minutes, but not too much. Mm, I don't know, they're pretty good. Hmm, they're pretty good. So I think we're good to go now. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the heat just a little bit. So I was boiling this or simmering this on a medium high heat. I, my functions are a little bit different on this induction burner, but on your stove, whether it's gas or electric, you would just, you know, bring, adjust your temperature so that you have a nice steady simmer and those little bubbles and you'll get everything cooked perfectly. Now we're going to reduce the heat down. We have a little bit of liquid here, but not too much. So this is going to work perfectly. Now for the secret ingredients, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, I know it might sound a little strange, but oh my gosh, this is perfect in here and I'm gonna tell you why. And one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Oh my gosh. And you need both of them, okay, to get this flavor that we want. And then two tablespoons of just plain old tomato paste. and just stir this in. So what we essentially did here is make our own little ketchup type of thing. So if you didn't have tomato paste and you didn't have the balsamic vinegar, you could use some ketchup, okay? Um, maybe a quarter cup, and that will bring those flavors into the dish uh, for your cheeseburger macaroni. But I like it with the vinegar and the tomato paste because the tomato paste will also help thicken everything up, um, as well as the cheese. The cheese will help too. Okay. So just stir this in really well 
And now we're gonna start to add in our cheese. Now you want your sauce to be a little bit uh, reduced in heat, so you don't want it boiling when you add in your cheese so that it will start to melt in. And what I'm using is just two cups of pre-shredded sharp cheddar. I recommend sharp cheddar in this recipe um, just because it really gives that flavor. But if you weren't a fan, you wanted to do to do a mild uh, cheddar or a combination, or you know, if you want it spicy, add in some pepper jack. So you can get really creative with this and add whatever cheese you want. Or if you're not a cheese person, you don't want any dairy in here, then just omit that completely. It's still gonna be absolutely delicious. You might need to add a touch of salt though, because the cheese is gonna bring in the salt flavor. All right, so I've got two and a quarter cups here, okay, of this shredded cheese. I'm gonna put in a full two cups now but I'm gonna leave a little bit and I'll tell you why. All right, so that's maybe a half of a cup, not a quarter cup that I left, that's perfect. All right, so we're gonna get this mixed in here and get everything nicely melted. If you need to turn up your heat a little bit, you certainly can. This is gonna finish thickening everything up, but if it's too thick, add in a little bit of the beef stock that we have there. I also recommend keeping that little bit of beef stock handy for when you reheat this, because if you're gonna have leftovers, which unless you have a really large family, you probably will have leftovers. Um, this will feed between six and eight people easily. Um, it's nice to put it into a little pot with a little bit of the beef stock to reheat, and it just kind of brings it all together into this like cheesy goodness here of this cheeseburger macaroni. Look at this, isn't this gorgeous? So just keep stirring, this is perfect. I don't need to add any more beef stock to mine. I'm just gonna get this, this totally mixed in because there's some areas here that need some more cheese. Look at that, so we are all done. So we timed it, so we're gonna I'm gonna tell you in just a minute how long it took from pretty much start to finish, from starting to boil the noodles until now, because you could certainly plate right now if you want it. All right, so it took 14 minutes from the time the noodles started boiling until now to make dinner. So honestly, I don't even think that you'd save much time if you did a pressure cooking uh, instead of the skillet. So this is one of those meals that's just so super fast, can be made a ton of ways, but using a skillet and a stove works perfectly. Um, you also can really, figure out how the consistency is going. You know, in a pressure cooker, you'd probably go down to two cups of beef stock and you might need to thicken it a little bit more because there's not the evaporation in pressure cooking that there is in using a skillet on the stove. All right, it looks absolutely perfect. Now, what I like to do just before serving is just sort of throw the extra cheese on top here and then just sort of mix it in so that I can see the cheese going through the, um, through the dish so it's not all melted. I just love the way that looks. Totally optional, totally optional. So then I just kinda move this around. You, the other thing you could do is put a layer of cheese on top and pop, if your skillet can go into the oven, just pop the whole thing in the oven and you could get like, you could put a breading on top, a cheesy breading, anything you want, and then bake it in the oven. That would be delicious too. All right, so let's go ahead and serve it up. And the reason why I didn't use the rest of this cheese, because I would ordinarily, but I'm gonna take a picture of this and I wanna make sure that uh, I have some of the cheese unmelted going through it for the picture. All right, so let's, oh my gosh, this is like so amazingly good. and. Um, I was just blown away. I told Jeff, I said, this is like one of the best things ever. So here we go. A bowl of cheeseburger macaroni. Mm. It literally tastes like you're eating a cheeseburger and a really good one. Mmm, 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 mmm. Absolutely perfect. The textures of everything are perfect. The flavors are perfect. Oh, you're gonna love this one. I can't wait for you to try it. And let me know in the comments how it turns out for you.